It's Real 92.3 Bootleg Kevin DJ Head. A special Coast. guest is in the building. MC Magic. Thank you guys for having me, man. Right, yes, man. man. It's really, really nice to be here with y'all, man. Welcome, Bootleg, God thank you, man. Thank All you. good, brother. Listen, Magic is a legend in the in the like West Coast hip hop scene and the Latin hip hop scene. This guy, I'm from Arizona, so he's the goat of Arizona. Man, that's a big compliment, Kev. I thank you, man. It's like you, you were I rock. I look at, you know, it's the yeah, two goats. Yeah, you know me, what I'm me saying? and Rock, we started up, we started kind of around the same time. You know, he was uh, doing his little recording studio up there on Thomas, and I was working a swap meet, slanging, slanging, slanging tapes. And that's where I got my name, was at the same swap meet. Bootlegging. Off Washington. <laughs> at 40th Street Swap Did Meet. Did I ever yeah. tell you once, um, I was, I, I had Magic City, uh, I, and I was selling it, and then I found out you were there, and I took it off my table so you wouldn't trip. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I was, you. I was, Thank like, you. I was like 17 at the time, though. Yeah, so. Magic City was a real special album for me. Matter of fact, that's why it says Magic City on my talk box is because, you know, I had just, just got done doing four albums as MB Riders. Um, you are. Your arm black in your face. Oh, okay. My bad. My <laughs> yeah. bad. Hey, you want the people to see you. Yeah. No, so I, that was like the first record yeah, alone, right? Yeah. I was back to being solo because I was solo before MB mm -hmm. Riders, which was Nasty Boy Click to MB Turn Riders. Race, yeah. And then uh, uh, coming back out, I had a brand, my new my new thing, which was Magic City. And so I put Magic City on my talk box. And a lot of people just call me Magic City because they think that's that's the name. But that was actually the first solo album post MB Riders. That no, was a big album, man. That was it was I mean that was a sexy lady was on there, right? Sexy lady, yes. Man, that's the one right yes, there. Yes. You yes. never even shot a video for that song. It's just the J Times Three version online. Yes, yes, we did. It was an interview <laughs> at the radio station. And to be honest with you, the reason I didn't shoot a video is because being viral, having YouTube, that wasn't really the thing yet. I didn't know about it. My son, who helped me shoot the video. He said, Pops, uh, let, let us shoot the video. And they came with me to the radio station. And so they shot it and they put it up. Matter of fact, it wasn't even on my page. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't until last year YouTube told me, he said, you know, these guys are monetizing uh, this video that's not on your official channel. Uh, do you want to take it down? I go, can you transfer it to my channel? Yeah. And so they took it down after like 25 million views. Uh, and, and, you know. Bruh. But it's, it's up on my channel that now. That shit's crazy, though. Yeah. Yeah. You, what, you, what, dude, you, that's a that's a that's a that's check. A check. That's a fat check. Bro. That's <laughs> you, a fat you check. You kind of calm about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what you want me to do? Now, <laughs> obviously we're 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 in LA, man, and and you have a huge following out here. Um and, you know, I feel like in in general like um like the Chicano rap scene, I, I don't think you make necessarily Chicano rap, but you know, obviously that that or I would say what would that be? Early 2000s to mid 2000s vibe say, but where but it was like that. you, little Rob, Capone. Something about you, baby. That that was the time. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, and there was like this, just, just, this huge, like rush of like Latin artists that were coming out of the West Coast, and it was like a really dope time. Why do you think that? Um. I think that you're one of the only guys out of those guys who kind of continue to. To be relevant, but why do you think that it didn't continue? Well, the way I tell it to my fans on stage is like, um, I want to thank you guys for supporting me, number one, and I, and I, g I give the fans the credit because, you know, um, back in the day, if radio wasn't playing you, you wasn't nothing. Facts. Yeah, fact. And so when radio was playing us, it was good. We were we were uh, current artists. Mm -hmm. We were current artists. The radio was playing us, and the people knew about it. I said for a time. My career, my music kind of went down. That's when I had to go back to h hustling at the swap meet, setting up at fairs, going to Indian fairs, and just slanging, slanging, trying to keep, stay relevant and stay alive when MP3s came in and, mm. and CDs weren't mm -hmm. selling anymore. And so then something amazing happened. You know, I discovered the Internet. Right. And so when I started hustling the Internet, making more content for the Internet, mm -hmm. then my career came slowly back up. I mean, and, you know, for someone who crossed the border, my dad was shining shoes for a dollar a shot mm. to someone who's, you know, hit millions. It's Gosh. really amazing. It's really amazing. And it's because of the fans. I give all the credit oh, to the fans. you got some crazy fans, man. Yes, we do. Yeah, from little girls to... You know, older yeah. ladies, man. <laughs> amen, amen. Hey, Girls have uh, lyrics to my songs tattooed on their chest. You know. Hey, so, uh, you just touched on something that's going on right now with the with the immigration and stuff like that. Do you yeah. feel like it's a responsibility of yours to like to speak on that or to represent or anything like that, being def descendant of an immigrant? You know, um, I, I think responsibility is a big word, um, but I take pride in representing. Oh, yeah. You know, a dreamer. 
uh, Kev will tell you every time I take the stage, I got two flags because my American heart. American and Mexican. Because my heart and my home is mm-hmm. the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the Mexican flag. It's the American flag. I like that. And, and so, yes, I always stand up for my people. And, and you know, it's, it gets important to be proud of who you are because the media, the president, and so many other people have – destroyed the character of the Mexican. I agree. You know, assassination of a character. Yep. You know, and that's what they've done to us. Matter of fact, I have a song called Defamation, and and it, and it really focuses on the way that the media has defamed a Mexican. And and here's another thing that white America thinks Mexicans are only in Mexico. All right. But the Mexicans on this side of the border, we don't say we're Mexican American. You know, every Asian goes, we're Asian American, right. we're Chinese American, we're Japanese American, uh, we're Cuban American. And so the Mexicans don't do that. We're, it's a kind of a pride thing, right. you know? And then there's so many different flavors of us, too. You know, there's the essays, the cholos, uh, you know, um, some call them coconuts mm-hmm. that refuse to speak Spanish, the tejanos, Bisa, and the paisas. Yeah. So there's so different, so many different flavors. It's like everybody wants to make their category something special. And I think that's why the media finds it easy to take shots at us because ain't nobody really out there saying, look, we are a group. Matter of fact, I have a T-shirt that says – the design that I haven't released yet that says slowly becoming the majority. Yeah, Which is true. That's Latinos, true. Latinos, yeah. Well, those people, those people that, that always talk about like – I mean look, what you're talking about in the media as far as like – People not understanding how like Mexican is yeah, like yeah. really the majority. Like yeah. they have never been in Linwood. Right. You know what I'm saying? My family raised me in Linwood and that, that shit is like it is Mexico. I mean, you know Linwood, Hawthorne, Riverside, yeah. you know, uh, Huntington Phoenix, Park. Where we're from, shit. Avondale, <laughs> Tucson. I tell everybody, I'm from I mean, I grew up around like I don't understand how anybody could be born and raised in Arizona and not have love for Mexicans. That I found no, that's crazy. Anywhere in the West. And the fact that we're like it's a red state is crazy to me. I mean, obviously there's the out outskirt Arizona towns. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which are a little bit different. But between Tucson and Phoenix, like, yo, like all my best friends coming over Mexico. Come on, you know Guada, what I mean? like, Guadalupe? <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, and, and and I think we're Mexican American because when I was in Mexico, I recorded with the biggest artist, the biggest rapper in Mexico. His name is Secan, C Can, C K A N, and Secan is amazing. The dude's got talent. He, you know, I called him like the Tupac of Mexico, mm. uh, and the best way to describe him, you know, he does love, he does hip hop, he does battle rap, he he just kills it. And I was rocking with him, and when I was down in Mexico in Guadalajara recording with him, one of the dudes says, you know, he called me Gringo. And I'm Are like, you serious? he called me gringo. Check this out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not a gringo. I said, I was born in Mexico. <laughs> and then he just laughed. So so even amongst our own people, we hate on each other. It's right. like an African man, uh, you know, dissing somebody that was born in America mm-hmm. because they're not real African mm-hmm. or per se. Well, don't you think that that happens between like, because I know some of my black homies would like, like clown the African kids in high school well, yeah. that weren't, that were from like, you know, Africa or from, you know, Ethiopia or shit. And it's like, yo, why are y'all clowning on that? I think it's just a segregation thing. People always want to make it their is. own shit, just like Vices and it essays. Is. And it's just what with black people, it's the same shit. Like, I had some Nigerian people, and yeah. the, the, the the difference is people from African countries don't say that they're from the whole shit. They don't say I'm from Africa. They say I'm from right. Nigeria. Yeah, they yeah. say I'm from the Congo. Yeah, and, they and say even I'm from then, Egypt. even the tribes, they got different dialects, and, right. and, and there's separation there. So no one's really the same, but we're all the same. You yeah. know, just like black folks that are born in America. They're both born in America, and they look at a you light-skinned boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do that you all the time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and so that's there's a difference right there. Yeah. And and I think you know sometimes I t- I tell my kids if we were all blind would we still be would there still be racism? No. Nope. True. You don't think so? Nah. I'd like it, to think we that would find it. a way. I There'd think, be a way to still separate. I think people, yeah. I think if we were all blind we would find a way to discriminate on each other. Yes. And you're right. Yo, boy, like, we're gonna separate separate the, the the sopranos and the tenors. <laughs> no. I'm gonna tell you <laughs> that there would be. You know what I'm saying? If we were all it's blind. Just human nature, right? Yeah, it's human nature to, to to separate what what makes you different from mm-hmm. me, and the tones of people, voices. People with beautiful voices would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Hey, beautiful, how you doing? Oh, that's so funny. That person wouldn't get a lot of love. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just human nature to want to be one of a kind. Different, yeah. Um, you know, recently you've been doing um some reunion shows with MB Riders. Now I know initially when you had broken away from the group, things were kind of ugly. How did that whole thing get reworked out? Between Zigzag and I'm trying to remember the name of the other guy from the group. 
Dos. Dos, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Zigzag and Dos, we're, we're good. We're good. We ironed it out. And to be honest with you, um, I didn't want to break up the group when it broke up, Kev. Uh, I, I begged the guys to make it work, and there was just too much ego and, and too much difference of – people say uh, you know creative differences – me being the founder, the creator, the writer of all the hits, I was like, you know what? I'm just going back to being solo because it was too many headaches. Mm -hmm. It's hard raising your own family. It's even harder raising three families. True. And so um, once I said I'm going this way, even my manager, Big D, he'll tell you. He's like, what are we going to call you? I go, MC Magic because he didn't meet me as MC Magic. Uh. He met me as MB Riders, and he's like, but nobody knows MC Magic. I go, well, we got a lot of work to do. Man. That's, so, and, and and to be fair, it was a, 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 a the right move. Yeah, Bro, that take, I mean that, that takes a lot of balls, though. I mean it does, but you know, like Dr. Dre did it over and over yeah. and over. You know what I'm saying? Bruno Mars is doing it over and over and over. You know, because you're only as hot as your last hit. True. You know. Would you consider what, what what's your biggest record? Would it be with the MB writer stuff like a So Fly, or would it be like like as far as your success wise, is it Sexy Lady? Which I would consider Sexy Lady my biggest record. Yeah, I think yeah. Sexy Lady's the one, man. I mean, cause when when Power in 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 Arizona started playing Sexy Lady, it just caught on like fire. I mean, my my album, my solo album, I was not on a major label. I was still independent. Mm -hmm. It was number one on Billboard the day that it dropped. I yeah. was I was uh, interning at Power as a 18 year old that that's that whole album is nostalgic for me <laughs> thank you man thank you kev that means a lot to me i didn't know that i remember doing that lowrider show yes with like carly hustle and j time Story. i was just at the tent hanging out and that was the first day and you had the huge tent with that the was, line you yes know, yeah. yeah that was the first that day we made fourteen thousand just on merch are you yeah, serious? No, yes. the line was crazy. That day, that was the first day that I brought out the two flags, and it was so powerful on stage that I I had to hold back tears because it was that it was that deep that day. And that was a that Damn. was a big day. Yeah. I remember that day vividly because it was my first like like low rider show ever going. Yeah. Like, it was crazy, man. Yeah. Now it's definitely. I mean, I'm, I mean, you've had so many stages of your career, and then you know, for people who don't know, you you decided to do radio for a little bit. I did. I for did for a few years. Uh -huh. Um, what made you want to get into that avenue? Because obviously, we were actually worked together. Yeah, yeah. For, for a little like bit. was doing afternoons, and I was doing mornings in Phoenix for about a year or so. Uh, maybe a year and a half, and it was Mikey Fuentes, the one that said, "Magic, come do radio," because uh, I had visited um, Boise, Idaho, when he was doing I was programming. One. Yeah, and I actually was there too. <laughs> yeah, and so he told me, he says, "Magic, uh, go on air with my afternoon girl." He says, "We'll play some of your songs. You can perform some live. You can bring the talk box." And then he remembered the energy was so good between me and D Garcia. Mm. And then when he came to Phoenix, he's like, "Magic, you got you to come try radio in Phoenix." I'm like, this home, you know, let's do it. So we gave it a shot. And then after a few years, um, it just didn't feel right because I didn't have enough time to be me. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, I wanted to do other things. And there again, I took a leap of faith. And even my manager, again, he's like, you sure you want to leave radio? That connection is important, man. You you're, you got your pulse. You're, uh, you got people backing you up. But I was like, nah, I'm, I'm done with this. Mm. And we moved on. And the next year, we made $800,000 uh, on ticket sales just on my website. That's not because... <laughs> That's not that's not uh, uh that's not uh counting in all the sales that happened at Ticketmasters at the point of sales at Ticket Yeah, because you pushed was it, MCMagicConcerts.com. MCMagicConcerts.com, which became another one of my monikers. Bro, wow. eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred grand, and that's just on our site. And we let me, work with all, me, like, all the ticket like, outlets. Can I have like twenty dollars? Yeah, yeah, you hey. need a twenty. <laughs> I got you. All right, for sure. Yo, but so. You know, because I've I've noticed like just the resurgence of you doing shows and 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 you know moving around and 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 um, is that something where you guys are self-promoting or are you working with promoters in the markets or because because I feel like you guys can at this point you know the cities that you're gonna sell tickets in you probably know the venues and Big D could probably just line yeah. the whole shit up. We've had three shows in in, in 2019 and all three of them have sold out. Those were all our shows. But we still do work with other uh, with other promoters, like we're doing the Pot of Gold. That's a big festival in Phoenix, you know, equivalent to summertime in the LBC. Yeah, right. Which, which we're on that one again this year as well. Damn. Wow. Are you? Yeah. See, are you? And, th and those are going to be MB Rider shows. That will be an MB Rider shows. But last year I was MC Magic on that one. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I can do both. Now, question, because obviously when you do something like summertime in the LBC, it's a lot of rapidy rap on that lineup. Yeah. And what you do is way different. Yes. Do you feel nervous? Do are you ever like? I mean, without sounding arrogant, I, I shut you. that motherfucker down. 
I don't take you as a nervous type at all. <laughs> I don't know. No, I say with arrogant. No, I'm what? saying I don't take you as nervous at all. Like, oh who's... yeah, yeah. No, no. The thing is that when when you grab your balls and go, you gotta go. Yeah. You do you it all the time. Go. Yeah. Yeah. You do it all the time. No, and, that's true. Yeah. No, we shut that motherfucker down. And matter of fact, you might be surprised, but my number one market analytically is Los Angeles. Oh, I don't doubt that at I all. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't doubt that at all. Um, um, you, how long ago you said the sweet, sexy lady? Sexy lady. Was probably your your biggest. When, how long ago was that? That was in 06. So 06. you talking about over at least over was that 13 years 13 years, 13 years, ago? years yes 13 years is that is that like a humbling thing to know that your big your biggest record was 13 years ago and you still selling shit out like yeah i mean it's um it's amazing i've had a lot of records i've released a lot of singles right, right. since then uh but it's still the one that touches people's heart the most like ladies girls cry in the audience you Tracks, know bro oh, that's crazy. I, have you ever been to a magic show that's never bro. you know the last time we did the novo the last time we did the novo downtown it was either novo was or last year or santa Ana. girls was throwing their bras on stage getting naked and i'm like hold up we got kids in the crowd put yeah. your shirts back on and, and it was amazing it's because i i think i think we all have a song or two songs that remind us of a real special time when we was young yeah and that has been uh, what some of my songs are to my fans. And so they get real emotional just to hear the song. You know, I got the song called Girl, I Love You that very little radio stations touched and people get Love married it. to it. Mm -hmm. People want to come on stage and propose to their significant other during my song. It's amazing. What's the What's the craziest thing you think you've ever experienced at one of your own shows? Uh... I mean, it don't have to be no wild the, shit like yeah. no Uncle Luke type shit. No, but. no, and, I, and I'm not. It's, it's not even. It's not even like that because my shows are, are about love. Right, know? right, right. It's, it's love songs. It's relationships. It's it's about realness. And I, I don't know, man. I can't think of a crazy thing that really happened in my show because it happens all the time. People getting married, proposing. All the time. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, we do marriage things. Uh, people just break down and cry. People run on stage and just want to hug me. You know, all the time. You know, that stuff just happens. Uh, you know, girls breaking this frantic. <laughs> like, no, baby, it's going to be all right, baby. It's going to be all right. And, you know, so and I take that as a blessing. Yeah. I'm, I'm humbled by it because, you know, I'm just I'm just a young kid that crossed the border, you know, in search of the American dream. It's crazy too, cause like a, a, a you're ahead of the curve a lot when it comes to Latin artists. Like the first time I heard Big Gemini was on Magic City. Uh, the first time I ever heard Snow the Product was on Digging. Hey man, thank you for giving me that one, man. Yeah. Cause Snow is amazing, and I, she hardly ever gives me that love. That oh, when we interviewed I was, her, I told her I was like, yo, I heard you on the MC Magic shit. He first. did say that. <laughs> yes, we yes. had her up here. He did say that. That was yes. a fire ass record. What I mean, and when then, she when she sees me, she does say, uh, man, man, Magic, we, we, we did that shit. Right. Yeah. But when she's in, you know, when she's on with, you know, the Breakfast Club, or she's on, you know, with right, uh, right, right, right. Sway, she don't, she's still underappreciated, I think, in the big grand scheme of things. Obviously, she's very, very, very successful. Um, but, you know, and then obviously you, you had your own artist. I don't know, Mob, is Mob Fam still under you or no? No. Now, Mob Fam, uh, we, they were never signed to Nasty Boy Records. Okay, I thought that, I that was I just did collaborations thing. with them on singles to try and help them out. You know, they say, like Magic, you know, if they, if they feel like we're part of Nasty Boy Records, they give us a better shot. And so, you know, uh, you know, we collaborated on a couple of singles, but they're on their own. And, you know, we just kind of gave them a push. Are you, um, are you like, is that, is Nasty Boy Records, are you just focused on doing magic shit or, or are you still open to bringing on some younger artists? I mean, in order to answer that, I got to tell you why I started Nasty Boy Records. Mm -hmm. I started Nasty Boy Records because nobody else would sign me. You know, I was yeah. sending demo tapes out. Back in the day, you had to be signed. And so, you know, I've always liked these hats with this, this thing, the Rhythm Nation thing on it. And I was at the swap meet once. And I, back then, the hottest label was Bad Boy Records. It right. was P. Diddy with right. Bad Boy. They, they was just running it. And so I was at the swap meet, and I just happened to see a, 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 a hat that said Nasty Boy. It didn't say Nasty Boy. It just said Nasty Boy. And I put I, – I liked the hat, so I bought it. And then I also said Bad Boy Records, Nasty Boy. That's what I'm going to roll with. And so that's where it started. But I started it just to get my music out. And then later on I learned – that artists and labels become this horrible relationship, so I never wanted to be nobody's label yeah. because mm. I didn't want to be. That's that shady motherfucker that took our money. Right. You see, that's that's not really what I want to be known as. That makes sense. You know, so no, I'm not looking for anybody to sign, but maybe one day that might be something that I want to take on if someone can really understand what it is, you know? Right, 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 right. That's what's up, man. Yo, have you, I mean, you know, I'm obviously we're both good friends with with Bash. Bash is uh, one of my closer friends in the music industry, and I know he 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 
you know, he hates it when I call him a Chicano rapper because <laughs> he he doesn't make that kind of music. You know what I'm saying? He, he ba- makes Bash is a pop artist. He is mess, fact, he's a messed with J Lo. He's Factual. messed with J Lo and Santana and, and he got Icon, slappers and, on know. slappers on slappers. But I always like think like man, it'd be crazy if like maybe like you and, and Little Rob or you and Bash or somebody did like a like a collab project. Has that ever been discussed? You know, I, I think it's it's on the verge of happening, you know, and, and it might be a few years late, but my new single that I just sent you mm-hmm. is called Search, and that is myself, Little Rob, and this young Latin kid out of L.A. that's amazing. He's a singer named Cuco, and this record is going to make some noise. You like Cuco? I love Cuco. Yes. Nico loves Cuco! Nico, Nico loves Cuco. Yes, <laughs> see? And, and uh, you know, you got to dig it. Kuko's kind of what my sound is, mm-hmm. but today. Elevated. Yeah, or, or today, I would say, up, you, know. you know, yeah, updated with the but time. But today. So, yeah, because if you did that, I mean, that would obviously light your guys' fan bases on fire, especially if you and Rob did a project. I yes. feel like the touring, the merch, yeah. just that would just... It, it is a good thing. If Rob is down for it, I'll do a, I'll make do a, a whole shitload album. of sense. And, and uh, the problem is that everybody's got a vision of who they want to be. And sometimes some of the stuff that Bash does, I'm like, I, I can't be part of that because I, I see some of the stuff that Bash does is a little bit uh, too disrespectful to females. And that's not me at all. Yeah, I mean, we know Bash. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and, but that works for him. No, 100%. He, he enjoys life. Yeah, he yeah, enjoys, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. he enjoys the, the finer things. And so <laughs> that's never been my MO, and I protect I protect my brand. And so that's why. And another thing with Rob, Rob's kind of an introvert. A lot of people might not he think is. of it, but he's a real quiet dude that doesn't like a lot of folks to know what's going on mm-hmm. with him. And so to get him to do one verse for me was pretty dope. Was t- right. But to do a whole album, that might be a, a lot of work, you know? No, I, I mean, I think that'd be crazy. Yeah. Um, are you got any shows coming up in L.A. anytime soon? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'll be. Uh, it's not called Summertime in LBC this year. What's the new name of it? A Day in the LBC? Yeah, they na- well, renamed it A Day in the LBC. Uh, we also have an NBA Riders reunion at the Novo. I think it's almost sold out, though. That's coming up? March 20. Oh, I'm going to go to that second. shit. Yeah, come on, Kev. I'm pulling up with the wife. Yeah. You you, you got to introduce us on stage. I'm down, you man. You got it? Yeah. yeah come yeah. on, man. Won't come be the on. first time, man. Um, What about an NBA Riders reunion album? That's a lot of work just because I know what I put in. <laughs> I mean, I, I know, I know how like, much. Uh, no, no, no. Listen, I know how much work I put in. I put in to put to build those four MB Rider albums. 100%. And so to go back and do another one, I kind of feel like, 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 let me put it like this to you. What if Keith Sweat came out with a brand new album? Would you love it as much as you do love Make It Last Forever? I, 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 I'm being 100% honest. I'm not listening to a Keith Sweat album in 2019. Well, oh, there you <laughs> if go. If he drops a new album, I'm just not listening there to it. There you go, because he's got so many classics that people don't even care about. He, ha- By the way, he has dropped several new albums. Yeah, I mean, that's, people don't yeah. care about them. Mm-hmm. And so why try to rekindle what's already on fire? Makes sense. No, yeah, that makes that. sense. You feel me? I feel no, I, I definitely feel like that that is the case with a lot of artists, like, specifically like the older guys who try to come back when they try to come back and they try to where they fuck up i feel like is where they try to do with what's going on now what's new yeah i suppose like yo do what your core like why i fucked with you 20 years ago place, or 15 yeah. years. do that but you know what i'm saying you're smart you're, you're smart and and i noticed that with the cumbia kings i don't know if i'm getting from me away from hip-hop kings. but the cumbia kings they had such a magic in their sound and then when they separated everybody did a different version of of their thing of their thing and it was never the same that's why that's why it stopped yo you i know? think you should do a sexy lady video now right now just why not man Let's do it. I mean, I ain't scared of it. I feel like, I, no, I feel like I feel like you should like shoot a real video oh, to the record. Is oh, what yes. I'm saying. Oh yes, I've actually I've actually shot some videos to songs that were dope back then and never had a video, and I've done like, it. Like why not, man? Yeah, yeah, I did it for for uh, you're the only one, and I should do a, a sexy lady That's video. That's the one. Yeah. You have to do it. Uh, as long as you get me the right the right female for it, right? And then I call J Lo. When is the um, J Lo? <laughs> when is the anniversary for that? Uh, for Sexy Lady, it would be May May 6th, right? May 6th. So that would be what, 13 years? Yeah, 13-year anniversary of it. Yeah. For the 15-year anniversary. Yeah, do it. Do a video. No, let's do it this year, man. Or do we, it this we, year. Tomorrow's never promised. You know Facts, what I'm saying? Facts, man. Tomorrow's never promised. <laughs> Call I'm not, J-Lo. I, you know, I might die. I'm pulling up. That would be dope if we could get J-Lo. I'm pulling up. Yes. Realistically, you got we just got to get it. you a fine bitch with about 100. Okay, I'm sorry. Wow. All right. A fine, lovely. You queen. married Bootleg Kev? 
a lovely queen with uh, north of 100,000 followers. This brand right I'm now. not trying to. See, I, no, I no. check myself. No, everybody got to be themselves, Head. Um, we got to get you a lovely lady with, uh, with with a whole lot of followers on the gram. I, we can find some for sure. And for, the, for those watching that, do, that don't know what sexy lady is, let yeah, me yeah, just perform. Go ahead, let's do it. Come it. on, man. Ooh, I want to treat you like a queen. I want to love you tonight. Sexy lady with the pretty brown eyes. Let me know if you're down to ride. That's a classic. Hey, man, that shit is dope. Yeah, yeah. We take you want to request? What? Nico. He, he said, notice, notice me. me. Nico, you a real one? Yeah, yeah. Nico's a real one? Nico, I'm going to do a verse to notice me because the chorus is pretty much all female. It goes, uh, I've given everything. I loved you endlessly. Yeah. But when it comes to me, you, you don't, don't even notice, notice me. me. Uh, uh. Hit that verse I forgot the verse. Time. I forgot the verse. Since the day you and I snuck away to be alone, I knew from the night something special went on. It must have been the first kiss. You told me that nobody else in the world made you feel this. I felt the same way too, but nothing stays the same. I'm sorry for the tears. I'm sorry for the pain. You were the one that always made things right. I promise you this, girl, you got a friend for life. Ooh. Maybe one day we can try it again, and maybe things could be a little different. So let's just kiss and say goodbye. Cause I really can't stand the pain of seeing you cry. Uh. Hey. There you go. The legend. Thank MC you. Magic. Uh, the new song. When's the new song come out? Uh, it is a week from today, which is gonna be March. No, February. February 27th. February 27th. New song, a new video? New song, new video. Man, I can't wait for y'all to see this one because I got some new surprises in it. I got and some that's new the record surprises. with J-Lo? Uh, no, <laughs> no. There's a, there's a theme in my question. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I see. That's the record it. with Little Rob, right? Yes, featuring Little Rob and Kuko. I'm glad Kuko. Nico knows who Kuko is. Yeah. Hey, Kuko's man. amazing, brother. And uh, plug, I know you do stuff on Facebook uh, every week, right? Don't you do Magic Mondays? I do. I used to do Magic Mondays, but after my analytic checks, it turned out that Thursday was the best day to do a live. So okay. every Thursday we go live on Facebook. I have done Instagram Live a few times, but Facebook just works better because my audience has kind of, you know, uh, grown with me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, and and not only that, the kids are right there watching it with mom and dad. But we get kids at the concert that are 9, 10, 11 years old and going crazy for the music. It's wow. incredible. Yo, man. MC Magic, thank you for coming by. Uh, website, I mean, obviously, mcmagicconcerts.com. And Nasty Boy Records. Dot com. Damn, that's fucking right. 800 